Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa Longo. Welcome to Everyday Rockstar Moms, where every episode I'll interview moms just like you who are rocking it in their homes, raising their children, managing their households, building their careers, working on their relationships, dealing with challenges, finding success, trying to find balance, and themselves along the way. Every episode, you'll hear from women just like you of all ages and stages of motherhood, sharing their stories, life experiences, and leaving you with practical tips, ideas, and inspiration to help you rock your life. Hey moms, uh, happy new year. I'm so thrilled that you're here with me, and I'm looking forward to more time together as we explore different topics that will help you and your family uh, rock. Uh, the greatest thing I have started to do in the past uh, about five years now is starting every year by setting uh, a couple of intentional words. Now, you know, what, what's in a word? Well, a word can mean a lot. A word can summarize a lot of what you want to achieve and attain. I learned this concept, you know, it's not an original. I adopted it from one of my girlfriends years ago. And I've since then expanded it a little bit, and we've done it every year in the practice for the last five years, and it's really helped a ton of people really get clear about what they want to, to achieve for themselves in the year. Now, we all know that New Year's is a great time to make resolutions. However, every time, every day is a great time to make a change. So I don't want you to feel like you need to hold yourself to making some momentous changes in the next few weeks and that New Year's is the start of something. I personally love the start of a new year. I love the setting, the intention. I like the excitement. I love thinking back of where, what have I accomplished in the past years and, and what am I doing moving forward. I just, for me, it's really, it's more symbolic than Christmas in some ways. But I do this because it's, it's an important thing for me to get a sense of what are the things that I want to achieve in the years coming. And when I can sit down and look at what I want uh, for my children, what I want for my family life, what I want as, as a woman, what I want for my business, and take a few minutes or a few, you know, okay, not a few minutes, maybe more like uh, a good hour, and really get clear on writing a few things down, then it can make a huge difference in the kind of year I have. And I will tell you without a word of a lie that every year that I've done this, the words that I have chosen have, have manifested themselves. And not because some of some magic, you know, woohoo kind of um, activity, but because you start by setting an intention. And when you set that intention, your actions start to follow up on it. And certainly when you set your intention and use some of these power words to start your year and you keep ref refueling your body and your belief system with it, you know, by using it in, um, you know, maybe a password that you're using or sticking it somewhere where you can see it or creating a, something decorative to remind you of your words, then it's going to even stick a little bit more. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about sitting down and taking some time to think about what you want for the year ahead. Think about your aspirations. Think about given the ages and stages of your children. You know, what do they have coming up that you want to maybe support them through? Think about uh, some, maybe some business things that are maybe already planned. But get a whole, you know, get a blank sheet of paper and start thinking down, writing down, journaling if you need to. What do you want for the year ahead? What do you want 2017 to look like for you? You know, is there an overriding theme that comes to mind for you? Can you sum up your intention for the year in a single word? I bet you can. You know, a great word can set the tone for your actions, keep you focused. A great word can also serve as a reminder of what's really important when everyday life stuff frustrates us. You know, we know as moms that happens every single day. You know, for example, when my sons were young and I wasn't in practice, my theme word for the year was nurture. And I actually had this written on a, a cute little um, note card that I had hung in my bedroom. And every time that I saw it, whether I was lying, you know, they were co-sleeping with me and I could see it or I'd wake up in the morning and I would see this word and it reminded me every single day that my focus during that period in my life was on raising my sons and looking after myself. My goal was to nurture my children and nurture me. It also allowed me to accept that my career aspirations at that time would be fulfilled at a later date, you know, and that the little boys in my kitchen, in my bed, running around me every day were simply more important for the time being. Other years I've had theme words such as the word grow, balance, focus, and they've all worked really well for me depending on what I needed to do. You know, the year that 
I relocated my practice and, and my home. There was a lot of focus that I needed. I needed to really be able to manage a lot of moving parts all at one time. And that one word was able to ground me a lot of the time in making the right choices and knowing that it was a temporary place that I was in. A great word also sets, uh, we talked about it setting your intention, but it will also help manifest, you know, the people, places, and even opportunities and challenges to help you achieve those goals. A good friend recently shared her story of using a theme word in the past few years. Abundance was her focus at one time, the first year she had her business. And, you know, because that was her key word, her intentions and her actions followed suit and she grew her business substantially. Following uh, her growing her business, she realized that she was ready to meet, meet a man and get married. And her theme word was love. And you can bet that she met the man she married. So, you know, metaphysics aside, what you tend to focus on tends to happen. So the simple act of creating awareness about what your goals would be can powerfully keep you oriented towards the actions that will then support your goals and make you more likely to attract success. You might be thinking right now, God, word, what word would I choose? Well, it might come to you really easily. It might require, as I said at the beginning, you to sit down and free flow with a piece of paper and write down what you want the year to look like. Um, it might come to you, you know, in the months um, following. It doesn't have to happen today, moms, but I want you to start thinking about this. And the sooner that you get this word, the better you can adopt it, adapt your life um, to make the choices that are going to support that word. If you have a word that's been already running through your thoughts repetitively, you know, especially if you've set resolutions or goals for yourself, then go with that. If not, then I'm going to encourage you to, you know, carve out some time for yourself. Um, sit quietly, reflect, write on that piece of paper, journal, get your thoughts out. Um, you know, just find words that depict your hopes and dreams for the year ahead. Something might pop out at you really quickly, or you might notice a pattern in the words that you write. You know, don't overthink it. Just keep finding words that maybe resonate with you. Friends, colleagues, people in my, in my practice have shared their words with me for added support. And this is also really, um, really beneficial. So once you might want to find a friend and, and do this activity with them. And then you can keep each other uh, accountable to this, to this action steps that go along with your word as time goes on. You know, um, words such as relate, believe, Focus, simplify, build, mindful, refresh, rejuvenate, fun. These are words that people um, around me have come up with from year to year. And it's been great to see them really apply those words to their lives. And it's come up on repeat visits in the practice here. You know, once I write it down, I know to ask them about it later on. So, you know, just some ideas to get you started. As I said at the beginning as well, once you have your word, Another important step is to write it down where you can see it regularly. You know, maybe you can use it as a password so that you don't have to consciously think about it, you know, so many times a day. Um, you could also place post-it notes all over your home if you need to. Get creative. Do whatever works for you. I know lots of you will have wonderful ways to, uh, to create a beautiful piece of art even to share your words. Um, you know, think about how you want to feel. Think about what things you want to achieve and see if you can distill it down into one word. One, one, one word is easy to remember. You know, if you pick one for yourself and let it shape uh, your life for the months to come. Some of you are going to be saying, Melissa, one word, seriously, that's impossible. And if this is where you're at, then I'm going to give you an option. And that is to choose three words. Now, I learned this from a business program I did a few years ago. And it was a, his whole premise was not one word, it was three words. Pick three words. And uh, since then, uh, so for the last two years, I've picked three words. And I will admit this makes it a little bit easier um, because I can, you know, pick words that really seem to sum up what I want to be achieving in my business life and in my personal life. And, you know, this past year, one of the words was tech. And, you know, for me, tech meant I wanted to make sure that I was using technology a little bit better uh, in my personal life and in my business life. It also meant for me techno uh, technique. So as a practicing chiropractor, it was a reminder that I wanted to make sure I made time to go learn a few things to continually refine and improve my skill set in the practice. So, you know, try to think of words that help you uh, 
Um, combine a few different areas of your life, you know, words that you can apply to perhaps your marriage, perhaps your child's life, perhaps your, your business life, maybe your health. Um, or it might just be that one word is all you need. Whatever it's going to be for you moms, I'm going to encourage you, your Rock Your Life tip for this week is to think about your word or possibly three words that you would like to reflect the, uh, the year ahead. I look forward to hearing the words that you choose, mom. So please be, uh, be willing to share them with us and uh, help other moms just like you. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Be sure to head on over to iTunes and subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss out on any future episodes. When you do that, I'll be sending you a copy of my top 10 tips for moms. These are some of my personal um, practical strategies I believe that as women we can all benefit from and, and help us be emotionally and physically as healthy as we can be. When you're also there on iTunes, I would also love it if you left a review. It's really important uh, to leave some reviews because that helps other people find the podcast and it helps, um, it helps inspire them to listen and, and potentially gain some insight from the podcast. Tell other moms that you know would benefit from this show or most certainly uh, nominate them and let me know who you think I should be interviewing. I'd love for you to connect with us on Facebook as well. Head on over to Everyday Rockstar Mom and join our community there. Thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time.